to humble yourself before you pray. Don't come to me full of pride because my word has already declared that I must, I must, and, and because I must, I will resist the pride. The word of God says, I resist the proud. And so he said, I don't want to resist your prayer. I don't want to resist giving you what you're coming asking of. I don't want to have to resist the thing that you're inquiring of. But if you won't humble yourself, I must. Because my word cannot lie. So he says, Watch the key to unleashing revival. He says, if you will humble yourself, I will do some things. But if you don't humble yourself, you can't hear from me. And if you can't hear from me, you definitely can't be obedient to me. And if you can't be obedient to me, then you definitely can't be used by me. Because I am a God of order. Everything needs to be in order and proper. Can I tell somebody, God is not in disarray today. And He's not going to have a church or a church individual that's not in line. That's why He says that you be in one mind. And in one accord, identifying one thing, that I am in charge, that I am the leader, I am the first, and I am the last. Because he wants us to know that if you will not humble yourselves, these are the events in order. He said, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. You see, I'm talking about the temple. I'm talking about the temple that God lives in. The temple that God works from. The temple that God is going to be found in. A temple that God can be honored in. Reverenced in. Worshipped. In. A temple that others would be inspired by. A temple that young men and young women would be inspired and influenced by. Remember I said this temple, unlike the last temple, wasn't going to be a stationary temple. It was going to be a temple that would walk through the city. It was going to be a temple that would speak to the sins of the world. It would be a temple that would say, come on, we can sacrifice right here and right now. It's not a given day or a given hour. This temple would be like no other temple. It would move around society. It would build altars of sacrifice on the spot. It was like McDonald's or Burger King. You can have it your way. That's what I like to think this temple is like. Honey, I don't care what you want to do. We can do it right here. We can go in the kitchen. We can go in the backyard. It don't matter. I'm here. You're here. I'm holy. So God. That's what we're experiencing with this thing called the temple. You see, this temple needs to affect the sick and the afflicted. They want to be visited by this temple. It's a temple who allows uh, us to, uh, to set free the minds and the spirits that are held captive by the vices of this world. Know ye not that ye know the temple of the living God and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. And so if I am a holy temple that belongs to God, then God's going to be in me. And so wherever I go, Starbucks yesterday, I sat there at 730 in the morning, half cocked out because I didn't get to bed until 1 o'clock. But all of a sudden my Bible study was perked up. And when I walked in, I said, oh, Never saw it like that. 
stick to the process. We don't deviate. Because that's what the devil wants to do. Remember, go ahead. Have one little beer. Go to the place of temptation. Right. Go ahead. You want to know why you fall? Because you keep visiting the place of temptation. God said, don't go there. Don't go there. Stay away from there. And Eve said, okay. And she had every other chair to sit in. But she had to go to this chair. She had every type of fruit, every type of vegetable, every type of anything she ever wanted. Notice that Adam wasn't there. Because Adam somehow got it in his mind that that's just some place that God doesn't want me to go. His mind was more on Jesus than the things that didn't belong to him. Why? He set a differentiator in his heart. He said, God said, don't go there so it don't belong to him. He said, I could go anywhere else so I could see him frolicking through the jungle. Thank you. Amen. He was naked. So he was there. He says, Whoo, where are you? Oh, wow. He's over here. Wow. Man. What is it about that seat that God doesn't want me to sit in? And sure enough, boop. Because God doesn't want you to be like him. Have had that little voice come to you? Oh, come on. One little beer ain't going to hurt you. Come on. One little toke ain't going to hurt you. Oh, come on. One little affair ain't going to hurt you. Oh, come on. One little theft isn't going to hurt you. That's what's going on in their minds. And as it's going on in their minds, you're like, oh, well, no. No, I know the consequences. And, and they're going, oh, no. That nobody's even going to know. Look at it. It's midnight. You've got to put that the door's already open. There's nothing that can stop you. All you got to do walk in, kick in the glass, take your stuff, and you're gone. And you're sitting there going, oh, well, oh, God. You, it does seem like that can happen. And, and if I just stick around here long enough, it might. You know, you know, and all of a sudden you walk in, boom, and the doors lock automatically. Alright. He didn't tell you that part. Alright. She had that fear. The next thing you know, he changes colors. He says, you ding that. Right. You ding that. You blew it. You blew it. God don't want you no more. God don't have nothing to do with you no more. So you might as well just go ahead and throw in the towel and go ahead and get knocked off your rocker. Then you find yourself where? In jail. All because we went to the place of temptation. You want to know how to keep your life right? Stop falling. Stop having troubles. Half the time, we can take care of that ourselves by just staying away from temptation. And so when I shared that in my Bible study, I mean their minds, because I, I, I talked to them. He was the, the head of the house. They had that part right. He was the head of the house, and he was the one that went to church regularly, but she just uh, said, you know, I'm just one of them rough ones, and I just say what I have to say, and, uh, and you know, and, and, but my husband, 